Oh, I didn't say that. All right, so the central limit theorem. Okay, I should the example here. So assume uh, that the average weight of an NFL player is 245.7 pounds. Uh, standard deviation of 34.5 pounds. Go. So if you think about an NFL football team, there's small guys, there's little big guys. So the deviation between weights, the spread of weights, is pretty large. And that's what that's saying, okay? Um, you know, on the same team, you have people that weigh 360 pounds and some that weighs 180 pounds, okay? Um, so the distribution is, is spread out quite a bit here. It says, but the probability distribution of the population is unknown, okay? So we don't know if uh, the population distribution of weights in the NFL is normal, if it's skewed. Are there more heavy people than there are light people? Are there uh, lighter people than there are heavy people? That kind of thing, okay? Um, or is there kind of a normal distribution where, um, like the middle of the road people, there's more of them than there are really heavy and really skinny or really light people. So uh, we don't know that distribution. So that's a problem for us unless we take sample sizes that are big enough, right? So it says if a random sample of 32 NFL players is selected, is that a big enough sample? Is 32 big enough for the central limit theorem? What's it need to be? N has to be greater than or equal to what number? 30. Okay. So because 32 is bigger than that, we're good to go. It says 32 NFL players are selected in our sample. So what's the probability that the average weight of the sample will be less than 234 pounds? Okay. The question says, does the central limit theorem apply in this situation? We're taking samples and finding their averages, and then we're going to uh, see what their distribution looks like of their averages. In order to do that, because we do not know the population, we do not know the distribution of the population, we have to make sure that that number right there is greater than 30. If it is greater than 30, then yes, it does apply, and the reasoning is that discussion we just had. So if we want to figure out what is, if we take all of the NFL players and we randomly choose 32 of them, what is going to be the probability that that 32 have a weight that averages less than 234? Okay. So if we think about what we're doing here, we're finding the z-score of a sample mean. Okay. And the z-score for a sample mean is that sample mean minus the population mean divided by the standard error of the mean or the standard deviation of the sample means. Okay, what we need to remember is that sigma sub x bar is found by taking sigma, which is the population standard deviation, which we know, okay, divided by the square root of n, which is the square root of n, n is 32 in this case. Okay, so we should be able to find those things relatively easily. Um, Take standard deviation, which is 34.5. Divide by that by the square root of 32. And we get 34.5. Point, I'm sorry, 6.098. Okay. Um, I'm going to make that 9.9. Nine. It's the way it rounds. So 9.9. Nine. So now if I want to find the z-score for 234 pounds, okay, because that's what we're interested in. We're interested in this group of 32, but their, their mean weight is less than 234. So we're going to take 234 as our x-bar, subtract from our mean of 245.7, and then we're going to divide that by sigma sub x-bar, which is 6.099. So you go ahead and do that. 234 minus 245.7. And then divide that by 6.099. I'm coming up with a negative 1.9183. That's my z-score. Now our z10, and we talked about this in uh, first period today. If, if we're standardizing a z-score, 
and we have um, like we're on Math Excel, and so all the questions in Math Excel, like if you have to use a z-score in a table, like there's a link there to pop open a table, right? That table is only precise out to that decimal place. Okay, so we would have to maybe approximate the, approximate this as negative one point like nine two. Okay, if you're using uh, Excel or Desmos or TIA three eighty four, you can be more precise. Okay, and the question arose, and well, if I'm more precise, let's kind of let's look let's look at this. If I go with uh, negative 1.92, I don't know if I've got any tables open. If we go with negative 1.92, so there's 9, 0, 9, 1, 9, 2, so it's 0 0.02743. 0 0.02743. 0 0.02743. Okay. And what that means then, if I'm looking at negative 1.92 as my z-score, there's my z-score, that's negative 1.92, and this 0 0.027 is that area right there. Okay, so we're saying that there's a 2.7% chance that that group of 32 is going to have a mean weight of less than 234 pounds. Okay. Um, so not likely to happen. Not unusual, but I don't think that's very likely to happen. Um, actually, it is un unusual would be 0 0.05, right? Uh, so that is unusual. Now, the thing that I, or the, the concept that I was talking about, if I'm going to use, let's get um, Desmos open, and I go normal distribution um now my mean and it's kind of maybe not as obvious because this we we haven't really used these commands on um desmos for central limit theorem and, and i would maybe argue that we probably shouldn't uh because these commands don't involve the n of 32 uh but if i if i use my my mean of 245.7. And the reason that I would be cautious of using this distribution, because it says standard deviation, but remember the standard deviation that we're interested in for the sample means is this 6.099, not the 34.5. Does that make sense? So just be, be cautious of that. Um, so if I do use 6.099, and I find the cumulative probability. Um, and I want to go from, um, let's see here, less than 234. So my max is going to be 234 here. We see that technology gives this to me to be 0 0.02753, where this was giving me 0 0.02743. Does that kind of make sense? Okay, um, I, I would just be pretty cautious about um, typing something like that. If it, depending on the decimal place it asks me to round to, using the calculator might be more accurate, more precise than using the table. Does that make sense? So in Math Excel, Math Excel gives you the table and it's precise out to like four decimal places. Well, if I use a calculator and I round that fourth decimal place a little bit different than the table, I might be off a little bit. Does that make sense? Okay, now I think, don't take me, I'd have to get into the questions and look at it, but I think that Math Excel builds in like a tolerance, like a, uh, an error, plus or minus, um, that will allow you, if, if you type in, if, you, if it wants 0 0.02743 and you type in 0 0.02742, it will still accept yours because it's within the error that they defined. Does that make sense? Um, if that were, and, and somebody communicated this to me uh, a couple days ago that it happened to them in a homework, but then they said, well, I had a similar exercise, so I, I went back through and fixed it. But they typed in like 0 .0273 um, because of the rounding that was provided in their problem or whatever, and it was wanting 0 0.0274. If you're off by like the thousandths or ten thousandths decimal place, 
I mean, counts it wrong like a test request, let me know, and I'll go back and give you points for that, okay? Because I, you're on the right track, you're doing things right. It's just an issue with the, the programming of, of that uh, precision of decimal places. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, obviously, the technology is going to be much more accurate than those tables, okay? Because uh, we can, with, with the tables, we can only put in negative 1.92. Um, with technology... We can actually put this in and put even uh, more decimal places in than are needed. Um, but that's what we get, two, uh, approximately 2.7% uh, chance that that's going to occur. Okay. Now what I want you guys to do, I want you to take a moment, and I want you to do the exact same thing we just did, but instead of using 234 as X bar, okay, I want you to find basically a Z score that attaches to 242 and a Z score that attaches to 251. And then uh, find the area between those. So find the problem. Basically, what we'll be doing here is saying, okay, if I choose 32 people out of the NFL, what is the probability that their average weight of that group of 32 is going to be between 242 pounds and 251 pounds? Okay. Um, so I'll give you about four or five minutes to do that, and then we'll come back and talk about it. Okay. So if we... Again, using n to be 32. So what would happen was your sigma sub x bar is still the 6.099 number, right? Okay. So the z of x bar when x bar was 242 is equal to 242 minus um, our standard deviation, which was our standard deviation to 34.5. 34.5. No. Sorry, mu is what I'm looking for. 245.7. 245.7. And we're going to divide then by the 6.099 number, right? Okay, and that will give me one z score. Is that, um, what'd you guys come up with on that one? Should be negative. Say again. 0.606. You guys agree with that? That sounds correct. Okay. Uh, and then the Z score for when it was 251 pounds, we'd be looking at 251 minus um, 245.7 divided in by the 6.099 number. And that gives us a Z score of what? 0.868. Okay. Anybody have questions on finding the z-scores? So then the probability, looking from the z-table, okay, we're going to look at negative, like, 0.61. Okay. Um, so from the table then, negative 0.61 is 0.27. 093. 0.27093. Okay. And then a Z score of 868 or 0.868, somewhere around at the 0.87. So point eight, and there's zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven. So point eight zero seven eight five. Point eight zero seven eight five, I think is what it was. Right. You guys agree with those values? So what do I do with those then to find the probability here? I'm going to subtract them. So I'm going to go uh, 0 0.80785 and subtract the 27093 number. And we get approximate. So it would be point. Five, three, I'm going to go seven. So approximately 53.7%. You guys agree with that? Okay. Now there's some rounding error there. Okay. 
Um, but let's just say in the ballpark of 53 to 54%, okay? That is the probability that their weight is between 242 and 251. Now what I would like you to do is the exact same thing, but instead of using N to be 32, let's use N to be 120. Okay, so now the only thing that changes is sigma sub x bar, the standard error of the mean. So we're gonna take now, remember it's sigma divided by radical N. Sigma for us was 34.5 pounds. That was the standard deviation of the population, 34.5. And we're gonna divide that then by radical 120. And I get 3.1, I'm just gonna go 3.15. Okay, so that is not now my new standard deviation of the sample means that I'm gonna use for my z-score. So when I go z of x bar, or z sub x bar, I'm gonna go, go 242 again, so my x bar, minus my mean, which was 245.7, but now let's divide by 3.15 and figure out what that z-score is and in the area attached to that. Then you'll do the same thing for the 251. So I'll let you come up with those values and find those probabilities and then we'll come back together. As we, as we calculate this, okay, that should give you a z-score of negative 1.174. Okay, you guys agree with that? Okay, the uh, weight of 251 gives a z-score of 1.68, I believe it's a three if we round up, okay? Now, obviously, those z-scores, if you're gonna use a table, we can only go out to those decimal places, so I used a calculator, uh, so you should have um, an area of this z-score, the area should be about 0.12, and now after that, I would assume that maybe you got a little bit different rounding than what I've got, okay? But you should still be in the ballpark of 0.12, okay? Uh, and this one here, I'm getting an area of 0.9538, okay? Again, if you're in the ballpark of like 0 0.953, 0 0.954, something like that, you're good to go. Does that make sense? Now what I'm gonna do with those two things is I'm gonna find the difference, and the difference gives me 0.8336, which is in 83.36%, 83.4%, okay? So what does that mean to us? What that means, think about what happened. We had a sample size of 32, and we had then the argument that there's a 53% probability that our sample mean the average of our 32 people is going to fall between 242 and 251. That's a 53% chance, 54% chance of that's happening. Okay? If we increase our numbers, increase the amount of people in our sample, because there's more um, members, okay, the, the sample mean is less variable, okay? meaning that there's a higher probability, in this case an 83.4% chance, that our sample average of 120 people is going to fall in between those two numbers. So the more people, the more people you put in your sample, the more likely uh, you're going to fall between those two values. Does that kind of make sense? Okay. Um, that is that is a fact that is always going to happen. Okay. Uh, larger samples have what we usually refer to as less variability. Okay, um, so that in turn is demonstrated or recognized with these probabilities increasing. More samples, less variability. So it's a higher probability that we're gonna fall between those two numbers. Okay, and that's, that's really what this last question is getting at. It says compare the probability when N is 32 and N is 120, what's the trend? Higher probabilities, okay, we can be more, essentially, we're, we're talking about confidence levels 
uh, in, in a couple days, um, that idea is going to uh, essentially allow us to be more confident in our results. Uh, I'm not going to assign any new homework. Um, last class asked if I could extend 7.1, so I did that. Uh, that's going to be open through Friday evening, or sorry, Thursday evening. Um, I'm going to Friday during my work day, because you guys don't have school Friday. Um, I'm going to work on grades, so I want to make sure everything was due uh, before Friday morning. Um, I exp did I explain to you guys how that practice test works? Yeah. Like I couldn't, I, it's just the way that I wanted to mesh things um, with what you're going to see on the actual exam, the types of questions. I had to set it up as a test. Um, but you have like an infinite number of opportunities to take that test uh, as a practice test. You're only going to see about half those questions probably right now. Uh, what I've got set up is, I think it's at 30 questions right now. Probably going to stay there. Um, and it's all going to, it's going to be, because I want everybody's numbers to be the same. So you're not going to do the test in Math Excel. I'm pulling questions out of there. I'm going to print it to a PDF. And then everybody's going to have the same test. Does that make sense? You'll do it on a Scantron. I'll be able to grade those pretty quickly for you and get your results back to you. Um, because it's just, it's a mess with Progress Book. Progress Book, the way it's set up for the height, because you guys are set, Progress Book is like set to the high school like grade card, okay, or, or grading scale. And the high school grading scale per most classes is not weighted. Okay, now I can weight the grade or the homework and all that kind of stuff in normal exams. But the way you have to input midterms and finals, there's really no way to do that with the control that I have to manipulate progress book in the background. So what I'm trying to say here is we will we'll take our midterm. I will give you um, the current grade you have with that midterm worked in so you know where you're at within the course, but that's not going to be reflected in progress book. Does that make sense? So in progress book, it might say that you're currently for the year uh, maybe sitting at like an 85. But with the midterm taken, you might really be sitting at an 81. Does that make sense? And I'll give you both those scores so you know, but you, it won't be reflected in progress book until at the end of the year. Okay, And at the end of the year, I can start to uh, – basically what I do is I just enter a final grade uh, and bypass all the – structure that's already predefined for me in progress book. It's a nightmare, it's a mess, it takes me about three, four hours to do 30 students, okay, to, to do their grades. So um, it is what it is, okay? So so when you see that, um, that's kind of what, what it's mean. Uh, so when, when you take the test and I grade it, I will put it in progress book. It, it'll have like a weird symbol next to it. I think it, it'll be like a, maybe it's a blue circle to slash through or something like that that basically says that's the grade that's there and right now it's not being calculated, It will that will disappear when we take the final and it will calculate that. Does that make sense? Uh, so I want you to see what you got on the midterm, but just the way progress book, it's, it's hard to explain, but even harder to com compute. <laughs>